All right, so we are talking about the Scarpa Phantom Tech and the La Sportiva G5 Evo. Lots of people call these a one and a half boot. They're not quite a double boot. Um, and what might interest you in one of these boots is typically they're lighter than a single uh, leather boot, which is the case here. These are my Loa single boots and uh, both these one and a half boots do weigh less than uh, this single boot. And of course, these one and a half boots are warmer as well. So the first thing I want to say is I think there's a place for each of these boots. If you can only afford one, I'll definitely give you my pick at the end. But I personally am glad that I have both because I would use one or the other on different kind of objectives. And I'll explain. So before I do that, let's get into the technical specs of each boot. The Phantom Tech weighs in at uh, 26 ounces for a size 42. Of course, that weight's going to fluctuate uh, depending on your size. For a size 42, the La Sportiva G5 Evo weighs in at 30 ounces. So not much difference in weight there, but the uh, Phantom Tech does win in the weight category. The previous generations of each of these boots had some issues. The Phantom Tech was very well known for the sole wearing extremely fast, which is why I never owned the boot. I read horrible reviews about approaches on dirt and rock, ruining the sole. And so a lot of my climbs involve long approaches, and I'm not a fan of strapping boots to the back of my pack. I just have found boots that are comfortable enough for me to wear on the approach, and that's what I like to do. Um, they have fixed that issue with this generation Phantom Tech. This sole is the Vibram Precision Tech Roll, and it is a hard-wearing sole. And yeah, I've taken it on plenty of long approaches, and I actually see no wear at all. So props to Scarpa, they definitely fixed the issue. On the G5 Evo, this is the second iteration, but the G5 prior to this one, People complained about it not being waterproof, and so I did not own one of those boots either because I want my boots to be waterproof, especially on long days in the mountains. If you're coming down after the sun has just nuked the glacier, you're going to be sinking and post holing, and I want the boot to be waterproof even if it's not raining or snowing. You will be below the surface, and so that is important. I want dry feet. The upper on the G5 Evo is a Cordura, which is a very well proven fabric. Uh, it's extremely durable and you know it's, it's like an extremely durable version of denim more or less. Lots of packs are made out of it. Hard wearing gear. Super good choice on the upper of this G5 Evo. The Phantom Tech uses a PU Tech upper with H-Dry and Scarpa's used H-Dry for a long time and People know less about H-Dry, however, it really is just similar to a Gore-Tex. Um, this is probably where some of the weight savings comes in on the Phantom Tech. You can feel the upper does feel less uh, durable than the G5 Evo. Not much wear is going to be happening in this area, and so this may have been a good choice in terms of a place to save weight. Um, H-Dry in my opinion, has been phenomenal. I've never gotten water through H-Dry. I love the product. It seems to breathe better than Gore-Tex. It is lighter. I think between the two boots, in terms of the upper, I give the victory to the Phantom Tech. I think that it was a good choice to choose a slightly lighter upper. It lowered the overall weight of the boot, and it is super waterproof. Okay, so the lining of the boot, which is the inside of the boot, the Scarpa Phantom Tech uses a Primaloft Silver, which has been around for a long time. They've used it on their boots in the past, and it's really a comfortable fit. I have no complaints there. The G5 Evo uses a Gore-Tex Infinium. And so, you know, they say that this is a waterproof boot. Gore-Tex Infinium has been used on products in the past that claim to be extremely water resistant, but not completely waterproof. Now, other users have stated that the G5 Evo is a waterproof boot, so I do believe that. I just want you to know that this product is used on not waterproof products, such as sleeping bags, um, being extremely water resistant, I almost said waterproof, but not quite. A lot of down jackets use it too. And so, you know, 
totally waterproof against snow. If you were to put this in a huge puddle, would water get in? I don't know, but you're not going to do that. It's not something I'd be worried about. To be fair, I have not gotten water through this boot um, or snow or what have you. Both of these boots have a carbon fiber insole, so uh, pretty much a tie there. Um, I like both. Uh, I have done long approaches in both, and they're not slippers. These are not going to be the most comfortable uh, boots on your feet. For people that do wear approach shoes, you may appreciate that if your approach is, you know, like six, seven, eight miles or more. Um, that might be a lot on your feet in something like this. The G5 Evo uses a Vibram Matterhorn sole, and this thing's a beast. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but this thing is a beast. It shows no signs of wear. Um, in terms of both these soles, they are similar, but the La Sportiva looks more aggressive and also looks like it may last longer. The lugs are deeper, so again, that might be some of the weight savings on the uh, Phantom Tech. In terms of the sole, I give it to the G5 Evo. Now, all that is a bunch of nonsense unless you're a gear nerd like me, so which one performs better in the field? Well, like I said, it kind of depends. The Scarpa Phantom Tech feels more nimble on the foot, and so I do prefer the Scarpa for uh, technical climbs, ice climbing, um, even uh, some rock climbing. I feel more comfortable on the Scarpa Phantom Tech. However, I have felt like maybe I've been warmer in the G5 Evo, and I think that the G5 Evo is my pick for regular mountaineering or hill walking. Um, both these boots have been a Rainier, Baker, and they both are fantastic, uh, but I do think that the G5 Evo is a little warmer. It is a bulkier boot. It may be difficult to see that on camera, but it feels bulkier. It feels like you're wearing more of a double boot. And for that reason, I would say the G5 Evo is a better mountaineering boot and the Phantom Tech is a better technical climbing boot. Of course, you could do either with either. I think separately, each boot excels more than the other in those categories. In terms of the lacing system, the G5 Evo features the BOA or the BOA lace system, as you can see here. Um, I've never had issues with it. It's just the ratcheting system. To release it, you pull on it, right? You may be inclined to get on this BOA system and really crank it down, and that will disservice you greatly in the field. It will bruise your foot terribly. There is a lot of power behind this system, and Honestly, I barely even turn this thing. Uh, I made some mistakes in the past of cranking down on a BOA system and I didn't know what I was doing to my feet until it was too late. It felt comfortable, but there's a lot of power and torque on this. Um, just be mindful of that. It is a failure point as well. These do fail. It's rare, but they do. The Phantom Tech offers the standard lacing system. Yeah, if you want to be fancy, you may prefer the BOA, um, quick adjustments, whatever. For the fact that this is bomb proof, it's lace, it's easily fixable in the field, you can service it really fast. Uh, I give the win to the Scarpa, I just am not as confident in the BOA. These are boots that you might be using for an expedition, not just a single day climb. And for that reason, I got to give it to the Scarpa. Let's move up a little higher. So at the top of each of these boots, you have a gator or like a super gator type boot. And um, hands down, I give it to the G5 Evo because there is an elastic pull cord here to secure the top of the gator. The Scarpa just remains loose at the top of the gator. There's no way to pull it tight. I thought that this was going to be a huge hindrance, but I was wrong. Um, it, it, it actually is more comfortable because it moves more with your legs. This uh, gator at the top of the G5 Evo can be tight on the calf, um, and it is definitely less comfortable, but it's not uncomfortable. 
It's just, if I had to choose one in terms of comfort, it'd be the Phantom Tech by just the smallest amount. Why do I pick the G5 Evo to win? Well, it's more waterproof. You can secure this just like a regular Gator and a lot less snow is going to get inside this versus this huge opening here. But again, are you going to be walking on snow that deep? You're mainly going to be walking on glaciers and frozen terrain where you're not going to be sinking. Unless the sun nuked the glacier and on the way down you are post holing getting snow in your boot, which I've done many times with the Phantom Tech and I've been uh, able to avoid that with the G5 Evo. Of course, both these boots uh, can accept an automatic crampon. Another thing to mention is the La Sportiva is a size 48, which is easy to find in the US, and the Phantom Tech is a size 49, which is something you cannot order in the US. I ordered this from a different country. Keep in mind that a 48 Phantom Tech does not fit me but a 48 G5 Evo does fit me. So if you are in the US and are having a hard time finding boots and you're right on the cusp of that size, uh, go with the La Sportiva. The La Sportiva Nepal also fits exactly the same. So if you found that the 48 in the Scarpa Found Tech or Mont Blanc is slightly too small, this, the La Sportiva will fit you. Before I give you my overall winner of either one of these boots, the Scarpa retails for $800. Um, I'll tell you, you'll find it cheaper if you search. I bought my Scarpas for $400 brand new. The La Sportiva retails for $850, but I want to say I paid about $500 for these brand new. Um, just look around, pay attention to sales. One more thing I need to note, this yellow coating around the lower portion of the boot here, it's not an extremely durable coating. I know that it is there to protect the boot, but you know, I've, I've got a lot of miles on these boots. No matter how good you are at climbing, you are going to trip here and there. There are some marks on this part of the boot, and it's either from a crampon strike or it's from rocks. I don't know. No matter what, you are going to every now and then tap your boots with your crampons. I don't care who you are. I've been doing this a long time. Here's proof. It happens to me. It's going to happen to you. Um, so, with that being said, this is wearing. On the Phantom Tech, there are no marks. Um, it's just something to be wary of. Now, this might be just an extra piece. It may not even be necessary. They may have added this in addition to, and if that's the case, then props to them. Extra piece of barrier. And maybe this is a reason why my toes feel warmer in this boot. I don't know, but they do. Both boots are plenty wide. A lot of people talk about the Scarpa being a wider fit and the La Sportiva being a more narrow fit. I disagree in terms of these boots. They are both about the same. And with that in mind, the La Sportiva feels very wide. And that's coming from somebody who wears ultras and ultra wides, someone who can't get a wide enough shoe. I love wide shoes. The La Sportiva is plenty wide and the Scarpa lives up to its name being wide. Which one am I going to reach for most of the time? It's going to be the Phantom Tech. I give the win to the Phantom Tech. I'm kind of an ounce counter in the mountains. I think if you move faster you'll be safer. Um, so most of the time this is my go-to. It's lighter. Um, a lot of my climbs are more technical. I want to be able to move around quicker, faster, be more comfortable on my feet, feel more nimble when it's kind of dumb and sketchy. Um, that's why I picked this boot. But, like I said, we're doing a multi-day uh, expedition. It's gonna be really cold. We're walking up a hill, Mount Rainier. Think, Mount, yeah, think Rainier, think Baker in the winter. Think things like that. This is the boot. This is the one I would go for. It does feel warmer. I like it for that reason. Plus, I do feel like if you're gonna be on your feet longer, you can just crack this BOA completely open. Don't even secure it at all. Let your feet breathe cruise up the hill like that, I guarantee you, you're going to be warmer that way. All right, you guys, that's it. The two one and a half boots, these are the two leaders in the industry. Let me know what you think. If you guys have these, what do you think of them? 
Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching, and please be safe in the mountains.